It's very disappointing, but that's democracy. That's democracy. When Shulka Adam beat Shadow Paymaster General Jonathan Ashworth in the supposedly safe Labour seat of Leicester South by just 979 votes, it sent shockwaves through the incoming Labour government. Labour had not seen Leicester South as particularly vulnerable, but a combination of Ashworth's abstention on a ceasefire boat and his constituents' frustration with the Labour Party that they felt had left them behind saw the area return a so-called Gaza Independent to Parliament. The campaign was ugly, so ugly that Jonathan Ashworth said that it was the most vitriolic campaign he'd ever been a part of. Shouted at and screamed at for uh, 40, 45 minutes and still I, still I had to seek refuge literally in a vicarage and they waited for me outside the vicarage and even when I came out of the vicarage they were shouting at me with megaphones, leaflets going around, accusing me of being genocide John. There's a distinction to be made between intimidation and legitimate anger with your MP, particularly when it comes to an issue as emotive as Gaza. But I have more questions about Shaka Adams' campaign. Why was another independent candidate that received just 339 votes on the receiving end of such behaviour too? I've come to Leicester to meet Osman Admani. Osman is a lawyer, and like Shaka Adam, he was an independent candidate, campaigning on a ceasefire in Gaza the cost of living crisis and the NHS. He says Shawka Adams supporters set out to intimidate him by campaigning outside of his house. Osman sent us a video of a group of men gathered outside his house shouting Shawka Adams' name on a loudspeaker. He asked us to blur the view for his privacy. What happened when you announced your candidacy? From family and friends, Locally, is very positive, but from, if I can put it as Shokat's team, they were not very happy. They were quite angry. Why? Because I'm a Muslim, Shokat's a Muslim, that's divided Muslim vote, that's what they cared about. So when my candidacy went out on Friday, timed at that Friday prayer, on Saturday, Shokat Adam's people, if I can put it that way, they decided okay, we've got to come into this area and we're going to make a statement. And you've seen the video yourself. It's uh, unprecedented. No one's ever seen something like that. They came down here shouting at Shoka's name on a, on a speakerphone, knocking all my neighbours' doorbells uh, to the extent that my neighbours were intimidated, they were telling their children, um, just don't react, stay calm. So for clarity, you announced your candidacy on the Friday. Yes. On the Saturday, supporters of Shoka Adam yeah. arrange a campaigning session yes. here. Mm. And on the Sunday, that's when the campaigning yes. session begins. So yes. two days after you announce your campaign, that's right, that's right. his supporters are, are outside of your house. That's right, that's right. So the WhatsApp message actually says this, and the video footage which I took on the Sunday shows it. It's clear intimidation, clear intimidation, intimidation tactics, and bullying, clear bullying. And that showed you what the reaction was from Shoka's team. They were really worried that another Muslim standing in now is going to divide our votes. I'm also a cleric like, most of them. I don't go, go around announcing this. It's not something you announce. So when people know that you're one of what they call the Molanas, you have that level of respect. You and Shokat mm. had quite a similar platform. Maybe what made you both distinctive was your uh, pro-Gaza stance. Shokat Adam, a lot of people he appealed to yeah. are people who might have perhaps uh, voted for you if yeah. they'd known about you. Yeah. Is this just a case of you having sour grapes? I knew I would win anyway, so it wasn't about winning. It wasn't about winning at all. We had five weeks. In five weeks, do you think I thought I'm somehow going to pull out 14,000 votes in four or five weeks? If I did, then I should become the Prime Minister. <laughs> the miracle of some sort. <laughs> yes. You have to ask this main question. Is democracy just about vote? If it's just about vote, then Shokat Adam won fair and square. Or is democracy about the rule of law, meaning justice, fairness, the way you operate yourself? Is this democracy? And that's what I believe democracy is. And that's not what democracy was or is for Shokat. Now, if he was really concerned about having uh, a democratic process, he would have then announced himself and told his, told his people, okay, look, let's not behave like this. He could have used the mosques. He could have talked to them. He didn't do this. In other words, there's tacit approval in the way they were behaving. He knew about it, guarantee he knew about it, and he approved of it by staying silent. 
So that's, that's worrying. What was clear was that both Osman and Jonathan Ashworth had suffered serious intimidation on the campaign trail. I had questions of what the supposed beneficiary of such intimidation knew. I went to meet Shawkat in Parliament to find out. I mean, Osman was somebody that we weren't aware of in terms of, I, 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 I personally didn't know him. I'd never even heard of him. Mr Mani says that some of your supporters followed him and accused him of dividing the Muslim community. Do, would you agree with that assessment? I think everybody's a democracy. Everybody's got a right to stand up and stand up and, and be counted. I think, as I said before, we are not a homogenous group of people mm. and everybody should be uh, who wants to stand. Yeah, I absolutely uh, agree that they should be able to stand. But what do you make of, his, of his, your followers accusing him of splitting the Muslim community? Yeah, I think people might want to think that, look, we had a... So let, let me take it from their perspective. That, that we had a... 22,500 majority to overturn uh, and if there was two or three candidates that were seriously going to take on the, 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 the Labour Party it wasn't going to happen so the, I suspect they felt that if there was one candidate uh, that majority of the constituents can get behind then it would become a two-horse race if they became a three or a four-horse race there was only ever going to be one winner are you aware of any intimidation or inappropriate behaviour by your supporters towards him? No. No? No. On, so on Friday the 7th of June, he announced his candidacy. The following day, the 8th of June, he was sent a WhatsApp message. It was forwarded many times, one of those ones, which asked people who supported yourself to come to the area where he lives uh, for a campaigning event the following day on Sunday the 9th of June. That day, a group of people supporting yourself were seen outside of his house with a speaker loudly broadcasting vote shock at Adam and Mr Admani says this is intimidation. What do you say to that? Yeah, this is, I'm completely unaware of this. Uh, if that is the case, that is not something that I would condone in any shape or form. Uh, and, but I'm not aware of that uh, whatsoever. So hey. I would require some uh, to, hear, to do that, but I would not condone that kind of behaviour. Can I show you the video? Oh, you can do, yeah, sure, sure. This is outside of his house. Whose house is that? This is outside Mr. Manny's house. Were they aware that it was his house? It seems an odd coincidence. Yeah, I mean, I think that, how many? I mean, I, I can't really comment because I did, I've not seen this before and I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. But as I say, if it was. Uh, directly uh, addressed to him, and I can see that why that would be uncomfortable. But if they were out there just uh, canvassing, then that may be a, uh, a different story. But as I say, I would need to look into that further. But I would not condone any of that kind of behaviour. So there's two candidates who allege serious intimidation on behalf of your supporters for, for very different reasons. You've said you don't condone that, mm -hmm. but you haven't been so condemnatory of the targeting of Mr Ashworth. Well, again, I wouldn't condone any form of intimidatory behaviour. Uh, so what happened in that situation is uh, uh, Mr Ashworth came to one of the wards uh, and he was robustly questioned. Uh, I would condemn any form of physical altercation, verbal uh, abuse, uh, intimidation. Now, obviously, it's a very subjective matter. And if somebody feels that they're intimidated, then they feel intimidated. But from what I saw was a robust questioning of a politician who had not been, uh, who could be said to be absent specifically on this issue for so long. Uh, and then to them, they had the opportunity to ask those questions uh, and they asked them robustly. It's interesting, isn't it, that the same approach was used to Mr. Admani. Mr. Admani achieved fewer than 400 votes, but was kind of approached with the same heavy handedness. Uh, as I say, that I'm going to have to clarify because mm. uh, I see they were walking on the street uh, saying vote shock Adam and there was a lot of other streets that they walked around but I suspect saying vote shock Adam as part of the campaign trail so I don't know if this was specifically targeted to Mr Admani. Any form of uh, intimidation, abuse, I, I would condemn. Do you, think there, do you think there was a pattern there? No, I think I don't know because I've never been part of a, uh, a political campaign myself and I've never stood as a candidate. Uh, so I, I, I don't feel there's been any other sort of overt or, you know, 
illegal activity of any sort, or, as I say, of abuse or assault or intimidation, that that would be. But if I was to see any uh, or even hear of any, I, I would not condone any of that kind of behaviour whatsoever. Do you think there's a chance that it was being that the actions like this were being organised without your knowledge? I mean, look, in a there were so many variables when you're running and, 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 and you're an independent. I obviously can't have control over everybody. Uh, but I, I don't think, I think this might be slightly uh, in terms of there was orchestrated of anything of that nature. I suspect there wasn't because I think then in a city like Leicester, there's a, there's a good chance that, you know, people would have reported that back to me. I think the people were just out canvassing and, and it, that happened to be outside his house. But if there was any abuse or anything of that held towards him, then that would be a different matter. The campaign in Leicester South was messy and it will be relitigated many times over. Some will point to it and say it's the beginning of a new sort of sectarian politics in Britain. And others will use it to discredit the candidacy of other Gaza independents. But what's true is this. Two very different candidates say that they suffered intimidation at the hands of supporters of the man who won. Shawka Adams says he didn't have any knowledge of his supporters' behaviour, and it's not clear that they would have listened to him even if he tried to call it off. Should he be held responsible for actions done in his name, but without his consent? What's evident is that there was a group of people prepared to help him win using any tactics necessary. And next time, it could be even uglier.